Thank you to all of our wonderful patrons and sponsors. And don't forget to check out our Rigging Doctor swag using the link in the description down below. If you've been following us for a while, then you're pretty well acquainted with the boat, mostly on the outside and pretty much on the inside too, but you may not know what's going on below the floor. So in this episode, we're going to take you on a tour under the floor. We're gonna take you from stern to bow. So to start with, we're going to begin with our aftmost floorboard, lift it up, show you what's inside. Begin the tour. So, behind floor number one. <laughs> so, in here, we have a bunch of stuff going on. So, we have the hot water lines to our baseboard heaters, and then we have the rain collector water hose, and then that big one down there is the uh, manual bilge pump, and then down next to it, we have the shaft and the packing gland and a little sump. Now, right here, we have a really cool setup that lets us use either water from the water heater or salt water. So right now, the water heater is closed and the salt water is on. So that means that when we open the hot water tap, salt water comes out. So we have an endless supply of water to clean dishes and stuff like that. The next one is the grate. Now most sailboats have a grate when you come down the companionway and it's really easy for keys, coins, all sorts of things that you really want to keep to fall through that little grate. So under the grate we have a screen which catches those and then they don't fall into the bilge. So in here we have the hose that drains the uh, the water that's melted from the fridge and we just drain it right down into the sump and pump it out and then we have a 15 amp charger for the motor bank and then we have a 6 amp charger that Alan sent us uh, one of our viewers and this is the back end of the motor so in the front compartment is the other half of the motor and this is where all the stuff happens it's covered up in these metal plates that way dust and stuff doesn't fall in there so it's not too impressive looking and then this is the circulator pump to the hot water system for the baseboards so it simply circulates water from the water heater through the baseboard heaters and that keeps everything nice and toasty in the winter and as usual old boats are a giant spider web of wires running all over the place and then the huge wires that power the electric motor Next, we're going to reveal what's under the main part of our uh, floor space, and it's a big open area. Yeah, so this used to be the old diesel motor, and the transmission was that little one there. Now it's not. <laughs> so. so when we took out our old diesel motor, we got a ton of extra floor space. Where the motor used to be, we now have a giant box that holds eight Group 31 batteries. We have space for the toolbox and a ton of these water bottles. So we carry 200 gallons of fresh water and then we also carry about two months supply of fresh water in bottles scattered around the boat, some of which are down in here. <laughs> Uh, this is the old fuel system that we used to use for the diesel motor to polish it. Now we use it to pump diesel fuel into our day tank for the heater. And that's the raw water strainer that feeds into our salt water pump. And then we can use that pumped in the sinks. And that is the air conditioner pump, which we've fixed and it now runs again. Perhaps the most important thing we have down here is our bilge cheese. Yes, it is wondrous. <laughs> we've been eating the smaller bottle and it's absolutely delicious. Yeah, we've gone through it quite a ways. <laughs> <laughs> Should probably put it in here to make it last longer. Yeah. Now on board we keep two toolboxes. We have this really complete one and then we have a very small limited one. This one's really nice because it has any tool we need to fix anything on the boat. 
problem is it's big and heavy. So that's why for like quick things, I keep a couple screwdrivers and some pliers separate. So this guy lives in here. It's one of those craftsman million piece, everything you could want setups. So it's got socket wrenches and all sorts of assort assorted parts and pieces. It's got quarter inch, half inch, three eighth inch, box wrenches, lots and lots of stuff. So you have all that and then up here you have more assorted tools. Now one big problem on a sailboat is salt water and corrosion so you can see like my files look horrible. I just soak rags with or paper towel with WD-40 and just lay it on top and that kind of helps keep the corrosion at bay a bit. And every floor is a ceiling to somewhere else. So down here we have yet another compartment. So down there, that is actually our rain tank. So it's a bladder tank that I slipped in through this and it holds all the rainwater that we collect. And then from there, we pump it out using this hose that's right up here. And that runs to a valve and then we can put it into each tank wherever we need it. So most floorboards, and for good reason, are made out of a thin teak veneer over a piece of plastic or something. Makes them really light and easy to manage. These are far from that. So it's a big three quarter inch piece of plywood. And then on top of it is three quarter inch planking of white oak, surrounded by a trim of mahogany. So it's really heavy. And then they're huge. And if you drop them on your toe, it's gonna hurt. <laughs> but they're beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> the next floorboard to pull up is the access to our diesel tank. So the diesel tank actually encompasses this entire area from this side of the salon to the other and the floor is simply screwed down over it. So this is the only access hatch we have to it. Now this one is a nice thin wooden hatch so it doesn't weigh too much. And we have a couple things here. So. A lot of Morty hair. A lot of Morty hair. <laughs> this is the fuel outflow, and then the fuel in comes on the side of the tank over here, and then this is our access from the inside. So we could fill the tank up outside on the deck, but we usually bring in five gallon cans and just pour it straight into here. Now, this entire thing has a bunch of little bolts holding it all on, and it actually comes off, and this is our entire access window. So if we ever need to get in there to do maintenance or cleaning or anything like that, it's easy access. Now the diesel from that tank there flows all the way up into this tank here. This is our day tank and it goes ahead to fill our diesel heater. So that's really the only thing we use diesel for on the boat and it provides all of our heat, which is really important, especially right now when it's really cold. Our next one got a little warped when we flooded the <laughs> yeah. the planes. So this yeah. is our battery box. Yeah, so when when I uh, forgot to disconnect our city pressure, never do that. The ho a hose burst inside the boat and flooded the entire boat with water. So there was actually the entire cabin sole was completely underwater for many hours. So the wood swelled a lot and most of the panels have gone back to shape and fit. This one hasn't. So in the past when I've had to open it up, I actually use a screwdriver and kind of like pry at it and pop it up. But it doesn't really want to do that today. Under here is our house battery bank. Now we hold five group 31 batteries as opposed to the eight we use for the motor. Okay, we're moving further towards the bow now, almost at the end. And this is our little hallway where we have more water bottles. Yes, and this is our forward sump. So the condensate that comes from the air conditioner drips down into here and then this pump dumps it out. 
It's also our forward rescue pump in case we hold the haul forward. That bulkhead there is, uh, there are no limber holes aft. So the water will come here and then get pumped out the side of the boat. So it's a pretty hefty pump. It's a thousand gallons per hour. And if we're having an issue, then we'll, you know, rightfully take care of it. Huh. Yes. Did you find it? Yes, that's it. Very good. Now, down here, under these wires and in this narrow little area, we have the mast step. So it's that really white part down there. Now it's important to be able to see and visually inspect your mast step because you'll see bubbles form where the mast collar goes over the mast step itself. And that's a sign of galvanic corrosion. So that's a really big problem. And if you catch it early, it's not as horrendous of a repair. So we just frequently check that. There's water down here because of a couple things. We have rainwater actually, well we have a leak in our deck somewhere and it drips through the, the headliner and falls down in this area. And after many, many years of that, it seems to drip in right here. And this board has rotted out, so that's not so good. And the water that runs down the mast, any that slips past the mast boot or is running inside the mast itself, drains out into this area as well. So it's all fresh water in here but it's still some water. So that's the other reason we keep this bilge pump here, just ready to pump it out as it goes. Now we've reached the end of our hose. So this is the rainwater hose, and we keep it up here because this is where we always end up using it as we pour the water into the bow tanks. So, setting that aside, we have the last hatch forward. So up here we have more water bottles, and a little bag with the Christmas ornaments we've received so far. And then up here, we have the boat's structural components. So our boat is really old, and it's back when they used to build a wooden frame and then glass it instead of plank it. So that's always fun. And this here is our knot logger, which something hit it and broke off one of the paddle legs, so it doesn't work at the moment. And then on the other side, we have our transducer for the depth sounder. Now we have some water in here and that is salt water and that's from when we were out in that stormy Cape Hatteras and it's collected there. There aren't any limber holes in this area so I need to actually pump that out and that's about as low as I got it at the time. So a pretty cool thing, this boat has two bilges. There's this shell where if water falls in here it gets sent all the way back into the regular bilge and it runs through the limber holes and everything. And then we have this other section where you have the structural components of the hull. So down here you see this separate beam that's glassed over. That's actually our keel timber. So back in the 60s they didn't really understand how fiberglass worked and they didn't know how strong it was. So they, it was a new material to them. So what they would do is they'd actually build a wooden frame and instead of planking the frame they would glass it. So it gives you two advantages. One, wooden boats are really strong because their strength comes from the frame. And then fiberglass boats are really strong because the fiberglass of the hull itself gives it its strength. So if you get a boat from the 60s when they didn't understand that you didn't still need to build a wooden frame, you get pretty much a double strength boat. So, yay. And then the other good thing is there's actual wood in there that you can inspect to make sure is healthy and that's what's giving your boat its strength. So we have the keel and keelson that run all the way down uh, stem to stern, and then the back we have a big horn timber that runs out to the aft chain plates. So it's, it's old construction techniques. That concludes our floor tour. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments down below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. We're about to do something that I have never done before, which is get fuel. There we go, back to the boat. We ran aground again. Thanks so much for watching. And if you want to become a sailing buddy, you can click the link down below to our Patreon account. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. And when you click subscribe, make sure you click on the little bell in the annotation. That way you get notifications as soon as our next video is uploaded. Thanks so much!